argument, which I also hear circulated, is what about Proposition 22 and um, vote, voting eight years ago? Um, the, the vote eight years ago, is it, I guess, you, you hear the word activist used, you hear the word, you know, overturning the people's decision or whatever else. How do you respond to those um, sorts of arguments? Right. The Chief Justice of California, a Republican appointee, actually appointed to the bench originally by Ronald Reagan, had the best answer to that question. What he said was, the Constitution of California is the ultimate expression of the people's will. The people wrote that Constitution. It is the fundamental protections in that Constitution that we, the people, want in order to protect all of us when we need protection against politicians who sometimes make mistakes, against transient majorities that sometimes get things wrong. So when the courts do their job of upholding the Constitution and looking at a law that politicians have written and measuring it against that Constitution to see if it fulfills the people's will, they are in fact enforcing the people's will, not overturning it. That's why we have courts. That was one of the great innovations of our country, of the United States. The United States was founded on two basic revolutionary political principles. The first is that here in the United States, as Americans here, kings don't rule, the people do. And most things get decided by the people, <coughs> mostly by majority vote. And that was one revolutionary, crucial American principle. There were two. The second crucial revolutionary innovation that defined the United States is that not everything gets put up to a vote by a temporary majority. Because there is something more fundamental that is our ultimate will of we the people that protects all of us. And that's the Constitution. And to make sure those boundaries remain clear, in checks and balances that protect all of us, we have judges doing their job. In this case, the California Supreme Court, six of seven of whom are Republican appointees, did their job. When Connecticut's court ruled last week, a court composed of six out of seven Republican appointees and ruled in exactly the same way as the California court validated this very same idea that the Constitution is the ultimate will of the people and all of us are protected when that Constitution treats us equally. It is wrong to ignore the Constitution and it is wrong to try to change the Constitution to take away equal justice under the law for some people. And that's what Prop 8 would do. Yes, I'm wondering if part of the reason some corporations are in favor of Prop 8 is because they don't want to pay out a lot more pension and insurance benefits and what you have to say about that. Well, actually, I have not seen very many corporations come out in support of Prop 8 at all. The only businesses I've actually seen on the uh, supporting this anti-equality attack have been a few family-owned businesses owned by people who are anti-gay or who don't want to see gay people have the freedom to marry. I haven't seen businesses make a business argument. In fact, to the contrary, to the extent businesses have come in, they almost entirely, as far as I'm aware, have been against Prop 8 because they recognize that Prop 8 would be bad for California, would injure the economy, would hurt uh, California's economy, number one. Number two, they believe that it would hurt their own workforce because on their workforce are gay people, on their workforce are non-gay people who care about equality and equal respect. Google being a perfect example. Google announced a couple weeks ago that uh, it was going to depart from its, its almost invariable rule of being neutral with regard to political questions and oppose Prop 8 because, it would, because Prop 8, they said, would injure their employees. It would impair their business interests and it would hurt their family of employees, and it was wrong, and they didn't support it. And Google came out strongly against it. So I have not—I've seen businesses 
making the statement that this would be bad for California if it passed. Would it have any effect on pensions and insurance payouts? I mean, I'm not familiar with the details on that as it is now. Well, we have had partnership in many states for many, many years now, including California. We've had marriage now in Massachusetts for five, some years. There is no bad effect whatsoever. Indeed, to the contrary. The more we create workplaces, the more we create economic engines that include people and bring them in, the stronger they are, the better they do. When Congress passed, or when Congress was considering, under President Bush's initiative, an anti-gay constitutional amendment at the federal level, the anti-gay forces, Bush and the White House and Karl Rove, had the Congressional Budget Office do a study as to how much it would cost if gay people were allowed to marry. And they wanted to have that study in order to make yet another argument that would sound like an economic argument against having gay people marry. Well, the Congressional Budget Office, run by Republican appointees under the direction of Bush, making this report at the behest of Bush, came out and said that actually, were the United States to end exclusion from marriage and treat gay people equally across the country, it would save the federal government over a billion dollars. Now, that's not me writing this report, that's them. And the reason for that, again, is that the more we encourage people to be there for one another, enable them to pool their resources, enable them to support one another, to pay into programs that care for the survivor, rather than throwing that survivor onto government support, enable people to care for one another through health coverage, that strengthens families and helps save the taxpayer money, rather than the opposite. And businesses throughout the country have, are far ahead of where most state governments, not California, but where most governments are in treating gay employees, gay, gay customers, gay people they deal with equally, because they recognize that actually it's good for business, not bad. Business has gone further with regard to uh, economic treatment of, uh, of equality than the government has. And they've done it because they recognize that actually that's good for business. If Prop 8 were to pass, it would prevent businesses from being able, in California, from being able to recruit the best talent, hold the best talent, treat their employees equally. It would impose additional layers of bureaucracy on those businesses. And that's the reason more businesses have come out against this, and none, as far as I'm aware, have come out in support of it.